Hey, Fred Minnick here, and uh, my first uh, um, my first review in a while, and just want to say thank you all so much for the kind words about the passing of uh, my father-in-law, Dr. Charles Inglesher. Um, whether you reached out to me personally on my email or any social media, or you commented here, I just want you to know I read them. I appreciate that. And if you'll learn more about my father-in-law, I put a, um, a link in the description so you can learn about him. He was an amazing man, and he's dearly missed. And he was not the biggest uh, bourbon lover. In fact, I could only get him to like one bourbon, and that was Rock Hill Farms. He was a big Scotch fan, a big Scotch fan. And I'll be, I'll be doing a toast to his life uh, with his with what I believe was his favorite scotch that I ever tasted with him. And I tasted a lot of scotch with him, but he loved Aberfeldy 21 year old. So I'm going to be bringing that out. Some Glen Kitchy, which he also loved, but um, I'll be giving some scotch reviews and uh, some dedications to Charles from time to time. Uh, but today uh, I wanted to jump into a, a review of, of an everyday bourbon that I haven't actually reviewed on my YouTube channel. I reviewed this when I was at Whiskey Advocate um, and it's been in a lot of my blind tastings, but I have not, I don't believe I've formally reviewed like a standard review of uh, Four Rows of Single Barrel on this channel. Now, where am I? I'm not in my office. I'm at a place in my neighborhood called Watch Hill Proper. Watch Hill Proper is this awesome new bar it's also it's got a membership where you can get like a locker like a lot of the bars in uh in new york in la uh, and in nashville there's places all over the country where you can uh, buy your own locker and stow your own uh, spirits whatever they may be i don't see any vodka in these lockers though i'll tell you that so it's all it's all bourbon but um basically this is a this has an incredible vintage library they have a really rare old forester uh, i just cracked open one from 1960 the other day it was only a 78 dollar pour i mean my neck hairs were tingling standing up the back of my neck we had a we had a bourbon pursuit event here and a, a lot of our patreon members were just here having a good time i actually have a dinner series here i've got a link in my description telling you more about it but our first one is on monday uh, June 13th, so the day before National Bourbon Day, we have a uh, my first uh, bourbon dinner series here. And look, on the menu it says where it says what we're having. It includes a Van Winkle, but I will tell you if you have ever been to one of my events, you know we do more than what's just on the menu. Uh, the menu is just that it's a menu, but there's also a wine pairing as well with the chef. So it's going to be an incredible time. If you're in Louisville, or if you're gonna be visiting Louisville, uh, make sure you check that out. I would love to hang out with you in, uh, and sip some bourbon. That's June 13th at Watch Hill Proper. It's in my neighborhood, so if we have, uh, if we have enough drinks, I might even take you to my office uh, afterward. And uh, you just have to promise me you'll, uh, you won't call the cops on me. That's happened before. Uh, okay, so. Here we go, I'm going to review the uh, Four Roses Single Barrel. Uh, of course, the, the Four Roses is known for having 10 recipes. Uh, their standard uh, single barrel is 100 proof. It uses the standard Seagram's yeast, the V yeast. This is the same yeast that's used at MGP, uh, which is a former Seagram's plant as well. Uh, this is, in, in my opinion, either you know top three, top five, on every best everyday bourbon list uh, for me. Like this is, uh, it, it's been inching, inching up in price. Uh, in some markets, it's like $60 now. So depending on where you are and what your tax situation is and what your availability of situation is, uh, you know, this could be as little as like $35, $40. Uh, but in a lot of markets, it's, it's starting to rise up uh, to the top. But this is a really good uh, standard uh, product to have in your house. So let's have at it. Four Roses, like quintessential note for me, has always been cinnamon. 
Uh, it's different for everybody, but it usually falls on the spice side. And the reason why is Four Roses has an extraordinarily large amount of rye in their mash bill. The mash bill is the term that we use for the, the grains that are going into uh, the recipe. And traditionally, people have used uh, equal parts rye and barley. And anytime someone uses a lot more rye, uh, it tends to up the spice ante a little bit. So here we go. All right, so I just told you that Four Roses quintessential note for me is always cinnamon, and yet I don't smell a single ounce of cinnamon in the nose. This is a vanilla bomb right off the bat. Now, every single day, your nose and your palate work differently. So this could be a day where, you know, my ability to smell spice is a little lowered, but I will tell you right now, I'm getting a lot of vanilla in this. Little bit of, a um, little bit of like uh, a cake, like some, like a cake in the, uh, in the oven. I, I'm not very, I'm not very certain what, it's kind of like uh, what kind of cake it would be, but I would say like some kind of vanilla cake, maybe like a, like it's coming right out of the oven. It's nice and fluffy, like a nice white vanilla cake. It's, this is just a vanilla bomb on the nose. Now, let's see if that changes when I go to the palate. First of all, it's hitting all over my palate. It's hitting the tip of my palate, which is where I'm getting all my sweet notes middle and like the savory zone it's hitting in my bitterness areas it's hitting on the sides of my palate but it is lighting up the back of my palate like you would not believe and that is where i detect my cinnamon and so the cinnamon bomb holds true here this is like a uh like a cinnamon uh toothpick you know when i was a kid i had a friend danny stillwell may he rest in peace um he would make these um these cinnamon toothpicks and he would sell them to us like a nickel a pop uh, while we were going around town to the malt shop and so forth we would chew on these cinnamon toothpicks and i just remember that amazing explosion in the back of my tongue like when i think about it now i didn't think about it then as much but that's where the cinnamon notes really resonated with me is my back of the palate this has that cinnamon toothpick note in here um after i've really Kind of just like, oh, good! I found I found cinnamon. I feel I feel all is right in the world. So I'm going to taste again. See what else I can get here. I'm definitely detecting some like chocolate brownie notes, like a, like a little walnut, little walnut, um, all kinds of uh, all kinds of sweet notes that I'm really just finding complement the cinnamon in a big way. Um, yeah, this is, uh, I hate to say it this way because it's, because it, it doesn't, it doesn't put it in the light that I feel like it, it needs to be how I've always thought of the Four Roses single barrel, but this is better than I remember it. This is better than the last time I reviewed it. Like, um, this is fantastic. Like, I mean, right now, if I'm, if I'm tasting this and you told me this was whiskey of the year, I would say, Absolutely, I can see it. Uh, this is a very delicious, it's very complicated. The finish is still there for a, a long amount of time. But I'm just thinking like brownie and cinnamon with like walnut there. And the finish is, is, is long and strong. Absolutely fantastic uh, bourbon. And the best thing is it's available. Uh, but that's gonna do it for, for this review. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I know this has been my first video in a while, my first review in a while, but I assure you uh, there are many more coming and there are a lot of cool interviews. I'm still taking a, a general break overall, but I wanted to get a review up uh, while I had some time. While I had a camera crew, thank you, Reed. And uh, I'm going to uh, just say thank you all so much for the support again. And if you would uh, be so kind, um, hit me up on fredminnick.com and let me know if you would like a sticker. I'd love to send you a sticker if you would like, uh, like to have a Fred Minnick Show sticker on the back of your car, but do not use in criminal activity. That would not be good for me or you. Don't do crime. That's gonna do it for this review, folks. Be safe out there. Remember, 
Baka sucks. Cheers. Oh, spilled it everywhere.